Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on sample mean, variance, and standard deviation. Thanks to Vicki Borlaug for the use of her PowerPoint in making this video. In this video, we will use the TI-84 calculator and its list feature to calculate standard deviation by hand and I've put quotation marks up in the air with my hands when I say by hand. When asked to calculate the standard deviation by hand, what we want is for the student to show the work involved in each step of the process. We will be using the calculator to do the arithmetic. So in our case, by hand means not using the calculator to get the final answer in one step, but to use the calculator to do the step-by-step -step process of finding the standard deviation. Let's look at some data and review our formulas. For our first example, we will use the following data, 4, 10, 19, 19, and 23. Remember that the formula for sample mean is x bar equals the sum of the x's divided by n. The sample variance is denoted by s squared and s squared equals the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. And the sample standard deviation is s equals the square root of s squared, the sample variance. The first thing we want to put in our calculator is the data itself which is the x column or the x values. The data is the x values. We will put those in list 1. To do that, we will press the stack key, then choose edit and edit under the edit menu. And again, we're putting the X's or the numbers under list 1. We will then type each of number or data item in turn, pressing enter after each one. If you make a mistake, you can delete an entry and you can also use the second INS, which is the insert button, if you make a mistake. This is what your calculator should look like after you've entered your data. Always check your data at this point because if you put the wrong data in, you'll get the wrong answer out. What is the next step? Well, let's look at what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the mean the standard deviation and the sample variance. And I did say those last two in the opposite order that we'll find them. But the first thing we want to find is the mean. The mean is given by the sum of the x's divided by the n or the sample size. So the first thing we need to find is the sum of the x's. So we need the sum of that first list. So we want the sum of list 1 divided by 5. The calculator has a command for that. Just like other things have an app for that, the calculator has a command for that. But it's buried in a menu. The first step is going to be to get out of the menu that you're in now, out of the edit mode. To do so, you will press second, then the word quit, which is above the mode key, and then clear. This should remove you from that mode. Now you'll press second, then list, 
over to math and then choose sum. Now we need to tell the calculator what we need to sum, which list we want to sum. And our data is in list 1 and list 1 is above the 1 key so we'll press second L1 and close the parentheses and then press enter. The calculator should then give you the following screen and an answer of 75. Divide that by 5 and we should get the mean of 15. So our sample has a mean of 15. Moving to the next step, we want to start the process of finding the sample variance. We must use the order of operations on our formula and we do what's inside the parentheses first. That means we need to subtract the mean from each data value, each x in list 1. So we will find x minus x bar. To do so, we can give the calculator a command that will complete this task in one step. Move the cursor so that the L2 is highlighted as shown on the screen. This will allow you to put in a formula. And we will type in list 1, by typing second L1, minus 15. Notice that the formula will appear at the bottom of the screen and this takes the x's from the list 1 and subtracts the mean of 15 from each value. When we press enter it'll, and by using the magic of the calculator you will suddenly get all of list 1 numbers subtract 15. 4 minus 15 is negative 11, 10 minus 15 is negative 5, 19 minus 15 is 4, 19 minus 15 is 4, and 23 minus 15 is 8. And it didn't take long for me to say that, but with certain numbers it'll be much easier to do and calculate this way than to try to do that without making a math mathematical error on your own. Now back to the formula and the order of operations. We have computed the subtraction in the parentheses. Now we're ready for the exponent, the square. So we need to take the numbers we just got in list 2 and square each of those values. Again, not by hand, but by using a formula. So list 3 will be x minus x bar quantity squared. Well, we'll move our cursor so L3 is highlighted. This allows you to put in a formula. You will press second L2 and then the squared button which is looks like x squared. This will take all of L2 and square each value. Again notice that the formula appears at the bottom of the screen. When you press enter all of those numbers in L2 are squared and appear in L3. Now back to our formula we've taken care of x minus x bar then we've squared it. Our last order of operation is the summation and remember the summation acts as a grouping symbol as well telling us to do everything else first and lastly to sum up those results. So now we need the sum of x minus x bar squared. So we need the sum of list 3. 
we will take the sum of list 3 and divide by n minus 1. n is our sample size. In our case, we have 5 numbers. And 5 minus 1 will give us 4. So it will be the sum of list 3 divided by 4. We again need to hit second quit to get out of any menu we may still be in. Then second list to get to our sum. Uh, excuse me, second list to get to the uh, list menu. Over to math and then choose sum. Second L3 to tell it to sum list 3, enter, uh, close the parentheses, and then press enter. Remember L3 will be above the 3 key. That will give us 242, which needs to be divided by 4. Remember that we're not getting this number by itself. We are plugging it back into the formula. And so when we take 242 and divide it by 4 and press enter, we get 60.5, and that is the sample variance. We're still not done because it also wants us to find the standard deviation. And the easiest way to do that is to let the calculator do most of the work for us. If we press second and then square root, and then instead of typing out, which we could, if you'll go second and then ANS and then close the parentheses, that'll give you your previous answer. It shows up as ANS, but it takes your previous answer. And then in this case, we'll take the square root of that and we'll get our answer at 7.778174. Three. So the uh, standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance or the square root of 60.5 and depending on your teacher is how you should round this. Ms. Borlaug rounded to one more decimal place than her original data. Um, however, each teacher has different rules for rounding, so be sure to check with your instructor about how to proceed with rounding. So a quick summary of our results, just so you can remember, we started out with our data. This is what your screen should look like, and these are the mean, the sample mean, the sample variance in the sample standard deviation. Now, we also have a very quick way to check the sample mean and the standard sample standard deviation. Notice this does not check the variance, but if you get your sample standard deviation correct, you should have your variance. Your data should already be in list one. You do have to complete that step. Then you press second, quit, and clear to clear everything off. Then press stat, calculate, choose one variable statistics, which should already be highlighted. The enter there is to choose the one variable statistics. So if you press 1, you will not need to press enter. Type in second L1, then you will press enter again. You will then get these results here. Notice X bar is our sample mean, and it gives us the 15 that we got previously. And the symbol for standard deviation is S, so we'll look here, and that matches up to our previous answer as well. Notice here the X just says that we did it on the X values. There are some other values that we could have done it on on this calculator, but we will not do those in this course. So just the X there is just to remind you that you put that there. We're looking for the 
S for the sample standard deviation. I have reached the 15 minute mark, so I'm going to conclude this video. I hope this was helpful. If you need additional help, be sure and stop by and see me in the Math and Behavioral Social Science building in room 222. Thank you.